Hi everyone, Pierre Rick from P2 Design. In this video, I will show you how I generally animate a run cycle for the game Noara The Conspiracy using the layered method. For the most curious of you, I've published the full time lapse of the animation process. The benefit of this method is that it allows you to get a nice result very, very fast and very naturally as soon as you're comfortable with reading curves and using them. This is a method I also use to create my base idle animation or any kind of short looping animation. Let's get started. One of the most important thing when working on cycles using layered method is to get a strong pose. All my controllers already have a keyframe inserted and I will make sure to insert a keyframe for every controller during the small blocking stage I'm going to do now. Since the character has a very specific anatomy, I'm looking for a raptor-like animation. So I will pause almost everything such as the hands, the feet. I may also pause some pieces of equipment, but I won't be pausing any follow through animated parts, such as the hair, the tail and the clothing. From there, I will start blocking the legs because the leg animation is the very first thing I'm going to do. I won't be animating the torso first, but the leg. And then we will layer the center of gravity animation upon this, then the hips, the torso, the head, and all overlapping animation. This is why this method is called layered animation or layered method. When I'm done with half of the poses of the character, I will be able to duplicate and mirror them for the second half of the cycle. To mirror those, I will just select all the bone, press Ctrl C on the wanted pose, go to the frame where I want to pass them and press Ctrl Shift V. It will mirror the pose. This way, I will easily get my pushing pose, up pose, contact pose and passing pose on both sides. From there, I will directly jump into splining. When I'm animating a run cycle, I generally walk on a side view. But the left to right motion of the foot is very important. The faster you run, the more aligned will be your foot with the center of gravity of your character. Somehow as if you were running onto a thin line. The fact of running or walking is kind of falling forward with control. So when we look at the up and down motion curve of the foot, we can see that it looks like the bouncing ball motion. You will find a nice parabolic curve and an hard impact on the ground. Once on the ground, it will stay still. And when it rays from the ground, it will full speed. We don't have any ease in or ease out. Regarding the forward and backward motion, the most important thing is to make sure that once on the ground, the foot move with a linear speed. Since your character is supposed to be moving at a constant speed, the curve must be straight. Regarding the side to side movement, as explained before, Whenever the foot is getting in contact with the ground, it does it on a line centered with the center of gravity of the character. In combination with those principles, I've also worked on the toes and on the shin bone. Since this is a free joint IK, the inverse kinematic works pretty high in the chain. And then I had to animate what is the ankle by hand. But it's not that complicated. You just apply those curves and those principles to the foot and then you just walk on the ankle separately so that you get a nice shape. With my leg properly animated, I will start animating the torso controller. So this is the controller that allow me to orientate and move the whole spine from the hips to the head. It's often called the COG, C-O-G for center of gravity. And I always start with the up and down motion based on the foot contact with the ground, whenever it's pushing or whenever it's absorbing the impact of the fall of the body. Then I will do the same with the left to right motion 
based on the food content. Then, as a layered approach, I will animate separately each joint on the chain, the chest and finally the head. Basically, I'm polishing each controller using the arrow key, meaning that the feet are leading the animation, then the cog, then the chest, then the head. In top view, I was aiming for a snake-like motion, so you can see that the head seems to be leading the animation. And then we have a follow-through of the chest. The I've amplified this motion and feeling using tweaker bones that allow me to translate or change the location of the different part of the body. So I'm mixing rotation and translation. Then I've countered animated the head to increase the feel that the head was leading the animation to get this snake motion. Then I'm going lower into the eye rocky. I start by animating the shoulders, then the arm for arm, hands, and whatever are attached to those parts. So these parts haven't been animated before, I'm directly animating them using curve and using some kind of overlapping motion, meaning that I'm moving the shoulder based on the chest motion with a slight delay and a slight follow-through animation. So we can see here that the different points have almost the same motion, but the further we get into the hierarchy, the larger is the amplitude of the movement. The same principle applies for the tail. I start from the root of the tail, offset it compared to the hips, and I offset the rotation along the chain. Note that from a side view, the tail is not moving that much, because the game and the character are seen from a top-down point of view. The ropes are rigged with a simple inverse kinematic chain. I will bake an empty with a copy transform constraint on each controller. I will make the empty's animation cyclic and then I will constraint the controller with a copy transform from those empties. Then, as soon as I will offset those curves in time, I will get a follow-through animation of the ropes so that I will be able to bake back onto the controllers. To do so, I'm using an add-on that Finn is still developing, but it should be available pretty soon. And if you want to know more about the principle of space switching and my method, check out this video. For the hairs, I've tested using the same method, but it wasn't that convincing, so in the end, I've animated them by hand. In this case, I've used the same principle of layered animation. I first animated the root of the hair based on the head motion. The rig for those parts is pretty simple. I have a root bone that allow me to give an orientation to the hairs. And then I have two secondary controllers that allow me to bend different parts of the deformation chain. So I've used the same, princi I've used the same principle as for the tail, moving the root and then animating the other part with a slight offset based on their hierarchy. Since it's a very short cycle, I don't add that much secondary motion, I don't animate the face, because you will see a lot of repetition in the animation. This is the end of the video, if you liked it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and a comment, and I will see you in the next one.